I guess um, you, like me, <laughs> wanted to know what's real, what's true. and not relatively true, absolutely true, completely true, really true. You know, not some half-baked truth. I want to know the truth. I want to know what's really going on, what's really happening. Not what I've been told, Well, there's a very good reason this message is never popular. I don't have any sense that it ever will be because the, all that wants to be said is that there is no knowing that. If you want to know that, then there are, <laughs> there are lots of human beings who would tell you that they know. The suggestion here, here is that it's simply unknowable. And that unknowableness of life is terribly paradoxically what has been sought. What is, that is the solution. The solution is that there's no solution. The answer is that there is no answer and that none is required. There's no need for an answer. Without the questions, without the questioner, without my need to know, everything is as it is. That doesn't mean that it's all how I want it to be. It doesn't mean that it's perfection. It doesn't mean that it's constant bliss. It's however it is. This, this life is however it is. And that can be any way. There are no exceptions. There are no exclusions. Everything is utterly and totally included. There's no acceptance required. There's no surrender required. There's no knowledge, no understanding. If that happens, that's what happens. If that is happening, if there's understanding, if there's knowledge, if there's insight, that's no different to complete ignorance. Not well, I'm afraid. There is something wrong in that house. So there's nothing wrong. Ah, uh, have I just been spotlighted, Darren? Okay. Shall I start again? Um, well, <laughs> I didn't notice who came up, but if, if whoever came up doesn't mind, then we could just carry on. Hmm. I will carry on regardless, but there's no way I could say any of that again anyway. No. <laughs> See how it goes, you could always edit the front off. Yeah, if, if you, um, because on the recording, all of your faces who are on screen one, <laughs> that's most of you, you'll be on the recording. 
if you if you don't want me to put that onto YouTube, then just let me know or let Darren know in the chat, and we'll do something about it. Well, that's going to be a short introduction because I've come to a, a halt. Well, Dario has his hand up. Dario, you asked me a question and <laughs> I fire, fire me up. Do you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. yes. I, uh, I found myself listening to Yuji Krishnamurti recently. I was wondering if you have an opinion about him. Yeah, I do. I do have an opinion about him. Yeah, what um, what a belligerent old bastard he was. <laughs> um, but yeah, but you you can't help but well, it's it's very fun. I find it very funny to listen to him because um, he's so uh, <laughs> he's so ruthless in how he presents this i would say i would say he's my favorite yeah um favorite speaker of this just just for his lack of caring about how it comes out and whether he offends anyone or upsets anyone and um <laughs> i also like his um what's the word for it He's, he's so anti-authority. Um, he's sacrilegious as well, which is always appealing. He doesn't, he doesn't, um, he doesn't pull any punches at all. But it can be, it can sound a bit brutal, but, but I always find that funny. I've, I've got a bit of a dark sense of humor. So when, when he's upsetting his followers and calling them names, it's hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> Irreverence is the word. Thanks, George. Irreverence. Thanks, George. Irreverence was the word I was, just wouldn't appear. Oh. He's very irreverent. I to say something. <laughs> but do you feel like he communicated and maybe an earlier version of this, or, it, or is it similar? Do you feel like it's similar to the communication? You, that's yeah, there? yeah, I do think it's similar. Yeah, but it's never the same. You know, two two human beings are never going to communicate in in an identical way. No, there aren't two human beings who communicate what we're speaking about in exactly the same way. It's always going to have a unique flavor to it. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's got their mic on. Are they out of yeah, that's me. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tim. Hi. Yeah, so, um, Yuji's grandmother said he had the heart of a butcher. <laughs> that sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used to tell us that all the time. <laughs> no, he was. Um, I don't know. It just. He was himself. <laughs> that was. I mean, it was the the one the most wonderful thing about listening to him. It's so obvious. There's no disguising the fact that he doesn't care. <laughs> and that, that can seem brutal, but I mean, that, that there is so much of this message, which is about that the sentimentality that self has, that's what he was, I mean, he was just, um, 
he was the anti-guru, wasn't he? You know, all that sentimentality towards the teacher, the love of the teacher. I mean, he detested that. And, um, yeah. and the, from the very first time I heard him speak, that resonated. I thought, yeah, if you're, if you're making your master special, he, he was all, he made it very clear that there were no special human beings. In, yeah. especially especially himself you know he he always he said about his words were just a dog barking and mm -hmm. yeah he didn't want anyone to repeat what he'd said or hang on his words or make anything of them <laughs> and um he said you know he he described what we're talking about with you know the falling away of self as a, a desolation a complete you know, annihilation. Calamity. Calamity, that's the word, yeah. yeah. The great calamity, yeah. And of course it is a great calamity for me. Mm -hmm. And he, and he that, said, well, you've repeated, you said too, uh, you wouldn't touch this with a barge pole. No, you wouldn't. No. If, I mean, you wouldn't, <laughs> you, no. you know, that's, cause it's not what you think, what you're looking for, which what you were talking about before, you're looking for this answer to everything and- yeah. Yeah. This, this is leaving you without any possibility of answers. It's worse than not even getting answers. You know, if you don't get answers, then all self does is continue to, oh, I'm just in the wrong place. I'm talking to the wrong people. I'm reading the wrong books. But the answer's waiting for me somewhere, <laughs> sometime. And um, yeah. this annihilates all of that. Yeah, if, if you can just get it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, if I if I could only get it, yeah. Yeah. And the wonderful thing about Yuji, he was very clear about it wasn't a getting. Right. right. Yeah. 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 So it seems like um, it's all about loss. There's but, something else though, um, because he, well, what we see now, there's a lot of things on YouTube and books that, and he never wrote books, but there are books that um, people transcribe. Yeah. And, um, but around him personally, there was that ferociousness, definitely. And, and that, you know, but there was also this softness that it's very hard to convey to people. Yeah. Because they don't see, you know, but just this way, if you, if you walk down the street with him or like, um, one time we were in Times Square and he he thought he had his pants well he had his thought he had his hands in his pocket but somebody he felt a hand in his pocket and then he this he saw this guy grabbing money from his pocket and run so he had his pocket was picked but he was like wow I thought my hand was in my pocket and then he said that was so good the way he did that. I want to invite him to lunch. You know, <laughs> they wanted to go find him. And, and other times like getting out of an elevator, this young guy pushed him aside and ran, you know, cause he didn't want to wait for him to get out. And right. he was so soft. He would just, there would be no reaction. Yeah. And that was like a whole different thing that I felt, you know, or saw around him. Yeah. That doesn't come across always. Sometimes it does in certain interviews. No, no, I, yeah. I've always had a sense of that as well. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Ellen. You're welcome. It's lovely Thanks. that you. Thank you, you know, Jim. I mean, Tim. Thank you. I really appreciate. It's lovely you. that you that you can speak firsthand about him. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it is lovely. Yeah. It comes up a lot in you, in conversations with you, especially. I think people bring that up. Notice that. Yeah. Well, if if I, yeah, if I resonated with anyone, it would be him. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't, I mean, I, in you, the, the physical things that he describes in the great, the catastrophe, I mean, I, I didn't have, it wasn't as traumatic as it sounds it was for him, but. It, yeah, well, you know, he's a, an, he's a South Indian Brahmin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so he would, it had to be very dramatic. It had to be dramatic, yeah. yeah. But I, I will say, I mean, if I describe if, how it was here, it was very dramatic. And then my friend said to me, well, it would be because you're a drama queen. You always have been. <laughs> so you would make a drama out of it. Yeah. So, of course, I, I did. That did really resonate with me that. 
it can be very trauma traumatic for the body excruciatingly so yeah yeah because <laughs> i don't i have no idea what happens in that i would say nothing happens but in the seeming happening of it I, it's very it can be very dramatic that's how it was here and that's how it was for him yeah and then one other thing he 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 called it the natural state you know that's what yeah. he, but then he's he told me i actually personally told me this he said i'm really sorry i used that term yeah because now people think that that's a state that they can now yeah achieve and that's you know yeah i so. yeah i had re heard something whether i heard him say it or i read it i don't know but i know that he did regret that because of course if you as soon as you talk about a state that's why i i definitely never say that because mm -hmm. this isn't a state it's just all states naturally yeah, yeah. what is Nat naturally what is states appear and disappear yeah 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 but i like the natural part of that mm-hmm because it, it is really very natural that's how it feels yeah. and um yeah life naturally being as it is that's it really that's all that needs to be said but mm -hmm. it seems like we say a lot more or there's a lot more to be said but that that is it in a nutshell human beings naturally being human And naturally being human is, is any state that appears. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they, they all just come and go regardless of me or what I say. <laughs> Everyone knows this. There aren't any human beings that control their state of being. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot who try and suffer greatly because of it. That's really all we're speaking of. Mm -hmm. The suffering is I don't like the state that I appear to be in. And I have to do something about it. Thanks, Alan. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, David, you had your hand up earlier. Do you want to ask a question? Yeah, you need to just unmute yourself. Hello, Tim. Yeah. Hi, Dave. Hello, mate. Ah, oh, nice to talk to you. Oh, How are yeah. you? Yeah. I was just going to ask you, so, uh, I know you might have said it before, but because I'm struggling with, um, you know, as much as you make yourself miserable and feel dreadful, you love yourself and that self, you know, the Tim Cliss. Yeah. Uh, did, did you feel, did you feel a loss when you lost that Tim Cliss? Yeah, I did, yeah. And it's hard. There was a lot. Of, there was a lot of crying for Tim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, who would want that? Again, that's you know that's that's another reason to say this isn't what I ever want for myself. I don't. I don't want to mourn the. Well, the thing is, it's it's worse than even mourning the loss of yourself because it's not the death of me. It's the fact that I never was which might sound better than death, but really it's actually worse. Because, you know, all of what I called my life was no longer mine. You know, every, everything, all my history. The history is still there, the story is still there, but it's not, it really isn't my story anymore. I have no investment, you know, the one who it belonged to He's gone, and um, it's seen that he was just part of the story. He was just he was just the central character. It was his story, and um, it does feel like mourning, Dave. Yeah, it feels like mourning a a, a great loss, and yet it's no loss at all. So it is paradoxical, but. But it's hard to let go. But 
yeah well i didn't let go I, you know if i say um, there was no letting go if i describe what happened it was it was taken self was taken life took me you could say because of course life will take us all all selves that illusion life will destroy the illusion That's obvious. So it does, it does, again, it, it might sound odd that there would be sadness for something that never was. But for all the effort, I, I think the most of the tears here were for how hard Tim had tried yeah. to make his life work. Yeah. You know, I just just that endless that all that effort and it was just then it's just blindingly obvious that it was for nothing and not only was it for nothing it was for no one as well well that is a huge loss there was, there was no compensation for tim except maybe compassion oh no well you could say in the in in the absence then there is there is great compensation it's it's massive for the human being but for for the one who tried so hard who had worked so hard to get where he wanted what and to achieve what he wanted to achieve then it was the end of the possibility of ever getting that then it does seem like a great loss dave yeah thanks Tim. yeah Thank you. There's no, there's no getting around that. I have heard tell, <laughs> I have heard tell that not necessarily, you know, self can fall away and it's um, all pretty painless. And, but that's not if the character's a drama queen. I'm pretty certain of that. It's well, still, it's just, you know. <laughs> You know, some cells will not go quietly into the night, will they? They will kick and scream. Well, I'm a kicker and a screamer. <laughs> I'm a make. I'm a make a lot of fusser. So, and interesting that hasn't changed. You know, this isn't a, this isn't about change of character. I'm still prone to make a lot of fuss. <laughs> and be overly emotional and, you know, reactionary. And one of, one of the most, again, this is one, another reason why what we're speaking of is not um, what self wants, is because I wanted to make myself better, you know, a better me, better person. And we're not talking in any sense, this is where I, another reason why I loved Yuji, we're not talking in any sense about becoming a better person, about becoming calmer more pure more more not more anything just naturally being that's why i think that's why yuji would have called it a natural state because it's naturally being exactly as the human being is being that's it that's all we're ever talking about here i mean there's this is a, this is the end of the possibility of becoming anything other than what is and what is is what we normally refer to as what i am it's just that what i am is not i <laughs> you could just say am but even that's too much and then you could just say be but then the language becomes very stilted and um, it seems a bit contrived. But there is just being. So there is just this being as it is. Life as it is, not life for me, not life happening to me not me and life, just life being 
as it is. And that, that can be any way. Any way at all, always. Scott has his hand up. Scott, nice to see you. Hey, Tim, good to see you. And Back you. Early. Nice talks. I'm appreciating them. Good. Um, I was a kicker and a screamer too. I think we all are. <laughs> not everyone is, but no, some people are really quite calm about, you know, the anguish of life. Yeah. I, I think we put a lot of effort to get into the station. We just don't realize that the train's going to keep going another 10 miles after the station. <laughs> <laughs> there is no station, Scott. There's no track, there's no train, you know. No, this does not, <laughs> this does not have any stations. It, 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 I mean, that's doesn't a, have, doesn't even have a train. It, it just appears that we're, we're in control. And then even when you were saying eff, I was efforting, I was trying so hard, I can, I can kind of remember that, but now I can see clearly it's, it wasn't my effort. It wasn't my pain. It had nothing to do with me. I was making <laughs> the big fuss out of nothing. Yeah. And, um, and even the thought that, that people should be different is just gone because there's no people. There's just nobody doing anything. And that means me too. I, I didn't do anything. I just was watching this body do stuff. And Well, well you're not even watching, Scott. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, there's no, there is, you know, the, the watching, the, the whole notion of there being a watcher, hmm. an observer. There's no, there's no observer. There's nobody watching this show. It, it, it starts to seem to me that the whole thing was built on some kind of misunderstanding I had as a toddler. <laughs> yeah, you, you messaged me and you said that, yeah. Like I had to save one of my parents and then my whole world was created. Right. Out of that. And so I started giving people meaning and, and now I hear people talking, I'm like, oh my God, that's so, <laughs> that's so confused how the mind is just, it makes spaghetti out of, out of nothing. Yeah. And we're so certain we've got it. Now I got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it is, it, there is, that's what we're speaking of. I mean, I've made this sound pretty negative so, so far today. But the, um, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the juice is, the juice is the peace. Yeah. The juice is, it, the juice is not where I thought the juice was. I thought the juice was in the action. The juice isn't in the action. The juice is in the peace and the rest. That's, that's, that's the love. Yeah. Not in being action man. Somebody came by today and they were telling me all the stuff they were doing and, and you know, oh, all this 10 years of work. And I'm just thinking, everybody got to go. That seems to be like a common path. It's just you go through efforting until you can't take it anymore because you realize it's not going to get you what, you what you want. It's like a, it's like an old movie or something. Yeah. But, but once you get out of it, you're, it's almost like you're, I remember Ramakrishna saying, it's like they're, everyone's playing 21, but you have 22. <laughs> You're out of the game. <laughs> yeah, and you, you, you can still play the game. You know, you, there can be playing the game still, but there's, there's no, the game is seen for the game that it is rather than life or death. You know you're going to get 22. <laughs> it just, it doesn't matter if you get 22 or 23. Yeah. Uh, this is all right. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Scott. Nice to see you. Yeah, you too. You've got a lovely Mediterranean glow about you. Just got off the Greek, a Greek fishing boat. <laughs> there you go. That's not true. You do, you do look like you have. We, we would believe you if you said it. 
I am in Italy though, so it's nice to be back yeah. on this side. Thanks. I was chatting to someone earlier, Tim. Yeah. And I was talking about how, you know, how often it's spoken about a lot like the fullness, you know, the emptiness is seen and then the fullness comes rushing in. Here it felt like the, the emptiness came rushing in. Yeah. Uh, and somehow then the full, fullness was more, I don't know, somehow that then everything was just okay. I don't know. I was talking to Walter, actually, Walter Driscoll, that's right. Yeah. I can't remember what we were saying, but it, but it's like, yeah. What? Yeah. Well, the... I can't, I can't really explain, I can't really explain, because nothing came rushing in, nothing was, it's not that there was something, there wasn't something there and there, there was, but it felt like that. Well... Yeah. Yeah, well, the thing is, I... I wouldn't have expected the emptiness to rush in because that's sort of the emptiness doesn't move at all. The emptiness is rushing nowhere. <laughs> the, empt the emptiness doesn't rush. You know, the, the fullness is the movement and the emptiness is completely still. Yeah, but it felt like and, um, a and the, the, they're just not too. But when, but when if the if the emptiness becomes I mean, you don't see it. No. I can't emphasize that enough. There's no. nothing to see with nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what I was waiting for. You know, that's that's the seeker's dilemma. I've heard all about nothing. I've heard all about emptiness. I want some of that, please. I'm fucking, I've had enough of this fullness of life. It's getting me down. It's pissing me off. I want some peace, which I've heard is in the emptiness. Show me it. Nothing to yeah, no, show. Nothing, <laughs> nothing came rushing in. No. Absolutely. No. <laughs> no. No, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it is overwhelming when everything is empty. That's what, that's what I'm trying to yeah. point at. That what, what we call fullness of life is exactly as it is. There's been no change. There is nothing different in perception or the way that life appears. It's completely full. It was always full. It's not different now. What is different is that fullness is completely empty. Uh, I don't even know what empty means. I just It's just not the realness, which is all I, that's all everything was. Everything was absolutely real in relation to my realness. I was real, I'm, I know my own realness, so I know everything that's perceived as absolutely real. The emptiness is, I don't know that anymore. It is exactly the same, but it's completely unknowably empty, as well as being what I said it was. So I said it was a table, I learned that when I was three, and the table is still a table but it's not the table that I took it to be. So it's known and completely unknowable mm. at the same time. Yeah, no, that, no. That's, that's, that's where, that's, what we're, that's what's being suggested is how life is. And where most selves reside is in, I know myself, I'm real, I am real. Therefore, the table is equally solid, real. I know what it is. It's nonsense. No one knows what a table is. No one knows anything, really. And then everything is just freely, wonderfully unknowable. And there's no difference between what, when I say unknowable, 
it, it's completely known as well. There is no knowing the difference between known and unknown, knowable and unknowable, knowable and un unknowable, just there is no difference. They're not two. You just, <laughs> you don't get anywhere. There's nowhere to get. So when everything is just as it is, and there's, there's no moving forward towards more knowledge, then it, there's rest. When is a table not a table? When it's a table. <laughs> <laughs> when is a door not a door? When it's a jar. <laughs> that's, one of my, that's one of my favorite childhood jokes right there. <laughs> Oh, Scott, if you still got your hand up, or is that a different hand? No, I just wanted to throw in here because now that, I, now that I hear you guys talking, I'm thinking emptiness is what me calls it. So, so that's the terrifying thing is if it's, if it's nothing there and it's empty, what the hell? I can't go there, you know? The me cannot go there, and he's always known that um, because that means he's not real. Because that means he's... So, so the more you sit in that emptiness, the more you see that it's full, it was always full. But that step, it reminds me that uh, there's an Indiana Jones where he has to walk across a, a, a chasm and he can't, it looks like he's gonna fall to his death and he has to put a foot yeah. out. It's just that one step and then you yeah. know, okay, this can be done, but oh my God, that first step is a doozy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, and you're, I mean, you're, you're dead right. Self is terrified of emptiness. That's why, that's why we have words like void and abyss for emptiness, which are terrifying words. They're words of terror for self because they mean I have nowhere to stand. I, there's nothing, I, I, I won't know what's going on. I won't be able to, I won't be in control. And um, that's terrifying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're so used to knowing. Go on, go on. We're so used to knowing that we can, yeah. or thinking we can figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, it's nice to see somebody standing about three feet off off of the cliff, uh, in free space. You know, saying, "Come on in." Mm -hmm. I think that's why we've been reading books and and you know, uh, looking for spiritual teachers or or non duality people. Just someone who's been there. You know, who could, you know, give us faith to take that step because it's it's. Oh, no, I know, I completely agree. I mean, that's why I was always going to meetings because I, I just wanted to, to re really, all, all self wants to know is that the emptiness is okay. Yeah. Will I not go crazy? I remember my mind, though, trying to catch the person in some kind of contradiction, you know, like, eh, well, if we can catch him in a contradiction, then, then I've got the proof that this is, uh, it's not yeah. going to work. But thing, I didn't. No, the Couldn't. thing about emptiness, though, it's never okay for me. There's no place for me. Yeah. Just, there is no place for me. That's, that's, that's the dilemma. Dave, and do you want to ask something? Sorry. Dave, do you want to ask something? It's funny, though, Tim, because I've known you a while, and yeah. now, I get self-conscious because I think you're famous. You know, when you talk to you. I find it harder to talk to you because I think you know you're uh, sort of a big star now. So yes, I'm it's, a right, I'm a, I'm a right celebrity, aren't I? <laughs> the, the, what I was going to say because when Rob said, I, I get the space thing, and I get the thing I struggle with is time because if I put an apple down, it rots. So I think well, there's got to be time because I can watch yeah. that happening, and I'm getting old, and things decay. Yeah, there is no time, but wh why? It just it's just a happening, is it? No, well the, the well the thing is there is there is time. There's the appearance of time, so it seems like there's time. That's how this that's how this <laughs> that's how this appears. So, but so absolutely there's no time. Relatively there's time, and those two relatively there's time and absolutely there's no time. They're not two. So it is so there. You, you know, you want a definitive answer. Is there time? No. 
Is there a appearance of time? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, you don't get anywhere. There isn't a satisfactory answer, Dave, because relatively, of course, there's time. That's, you know, science is based on that relativity. That's, that's what it is, time and space. But is there absolutely time? No, absolutely not. So there isn't, there is, it isn't a yes or no answer. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I mean, that, that yeah. is how it is. So it's not like, because I, I don't want you to think, Dave, that now I'm a celebrity, you know, I've run out of time and I'm not living in time. There's living in time. That's, that's how this life appears. Yeah. Human beings live in time. They do. You know, the sun still sets. It comes up in the morning and, you know, this human being sets the alarm to get up at a certain time. But that doesn't mean to say that it can't also be obvious that that is relative. Yeah. Absolutely. There's just this. And this appears like there's time. But this is timeless. This, this is not a recognition of time. This, there's only this, but this isn't in time. But it still looks like it is. I mean, I do, I do like that phrase, just the fact that, okay, yeah, but it looks like this. Oh yeah, that's how it looks. But just because something looks like that doesn't mean that's really how it is. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite beautiful, really. The, the, the idea. That it's well, it is, and believe it or not, I mean, this is this is. <laughs> I'm trying to say something positive about <laughs> self falling away here. I mean, the relativity of life is much more beautiful when it's obvious, and absolutely, absolutely obvious that that is just relative not absolutely real it's more beautiful it's not it's not less i don't know what i'm just looking at darren's face he's just pissing oh, his pants i don't even know i'm sorry kelly and me were just messaging it's real she'll tell she'll tell you later no it's just that's so distracting i'm sorry no you i'm gonna send you out of the class Get out. If there was a head teacher, then I'd send you to him, her. But, but, <laughs> you wait till you hear this. <laughs> stop it. Oh, hell. It's like having really bad children in your class. Always. There's always a couple who spoil it for everyone else. <laughs> I've said that a few times. Uh, <laughs> I have. Right. Where, is there anyone else who wants to ask anything or share anything? Feel free to do so. Michael, Michael Markham, go ahead. Ah, Michael. Hi, Michael. Uh, hi, Tim. Uh, when you say it's out of time, I'm sorry, I just got the last of your talk. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you say it's out of time, doesn't that imply that there isn't it and there's such a thing as time for it to be out of? Yeah, it's not out of time, Dave. No, Michael. <laughs> Forget I said that. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing else <laughs> no. that's bloody obvious isn't it yeah what ridiculous whoever would say such a stupid thing <laughs> no it's not at all uh, no no <laughs> no No, it's a tricky, it's a tricky old word, that it word, isn't it? That's a, <laughs> you, can, you can come a cropper with that. 
Yeah. <laughs> no. Are there any questions in the chat, Darren? No, I was just looking. Um, not really. Um, Anna, Anna, <coughs> Anna Britt asked a lot earlier, will you describe what happened to you? <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I, I don't think I'm up to it today. <laughs> well, well, you know, there's two there's two versions of that. There's uh, there's the short and the long. Um, so I'll do the short. Nothing happened. There you go. That's that solves that one. That's that's the nice succinct. No yeah. blood and guts in that one. And Jackie has a question. Jackie, nice to see you. Um, yeah, hi. Hi. Um, hi. Yeah, I just eat my dinner, so that's why I had my video on. Um, yeah, I'm. I just want reminding um, um, about not being not being a me because I'm I'm agonising over a decision whether to do something or not. And right. yeah, I just want you to remind me that it's not well, just it's not up to me. Just tell me what it is, and then I'll tell you what to do. I'm joking, I'm not really. But <laughs> what yeah. you don't you don't need whether there's me or you don't need me to agonize over making a decision or not. Let's there's, there's no that's why do you want no, why do you want me to so. why do you want me to say there's no me? Then you won't agonize over it. Yeah, just remind me that no um that that it's not me making a decision. <laughs> it's not it's not um you yeah you're asking you're i'm not responsible you're asking tell me, me like, i'm not responsible yeah you're asking me like a priest aren't you well unlike a priest the priest yeah. would say totally responsible but you're making me a priest of non-duality to um to relieve yeah, you of, all, respons of I... all, all responsibility exactly <laughs> what's what's the point otherwise <laughs> well the, the beautiful thing is it won't matter what you decide, Jackie, because that that would just be what's decided. It's is that is that any good? Yeah, nothing's. Is that yeah, like because there's nothing better than something else, is it? Like, what, like well, I'm still is, kind of trying well, to work out is, like what's the, the, the only best problem. Thing to do. Yeah, the problem with making a decision, the correct decision, is I've worked out what the outcomes of the two options or three options that I've got which one will have the most advantageous and the least dis disadvantages in the outcomes as if jackie or tim yes. could right. could know the the million variables of what will be the outcomes of my decision <laughs> so you can what I would yeah. say is, regardless of whether there's you or not making the decision, decision decisions are all fine because there's no way of knowing. I mean, you could make a decision based on, I think this would be the worst decision. And then that turn out to be by far the best one you could have made. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. You're very wise there, Tim, very wise. <laughs> but. <laughs> But it doesn't. I mean, decision making is a funny one because there is there there is talk in non-duality circles that, of course, 
there's there's no decision you know decisions don't need to be made or there won't be any deciding there's no cho there's no choices everything is choiceless well that yeah <laughs> that is very misleading of course choices still seem to happen there seems to be yeah. options still and all it's saying is you never were the one who made any decisions there's a great difference between that and that life is choiceless of course life appears in the in life there appears to be choosing yeah and come here so someone said you saying you're a minor celebrity I, I seem to have missed something when did you become a minor celebrity no I don't think Dave said minor I think Dave was implying quite significant not a minor celebrity there's no mention of minor Jackie that's true I, apologies my Dave, I'm so rude I'm so Dave sorry said celebrity <laughs> okay I tell you what if this is celebrity bloody hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's All not right, thanks for that. Jackie, it's not the celebrity that I fantasized as a, about as a child anyway, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a different You can put is, your prices up. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> prices do go up once you get celebrity status. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. I've spoken about this quite a bit before, but one of the great freedoms and the one of the benefits if for want of a better word is that there are no celebrities those people you know human beings who are a celebrity don't have any whatever specialness you would have given them even ug krishnamurti even tony parsons even jiddu krishnamurti even <laughs> even eckhart tolle whoever you've put on a pedestal as being spiritually superior to other human beings. This is the end of any superiority or inferiority. You like, there's liking what you like, there's resonating with what resonates, there's disliking the human beings you don't like. It was just never your liking or your disliking is really most natural. But every human being is terribly ordinary and in that, in that outrageous ordinariness of every human being is all their beauty, is all their specialness, is all their, is all the wonder of each human being being utterly unique in their ordinariness. It's the total absence of the possibility that another human being could know more about life than you or your mum, or your son, or your auntie Maggie, you know, who you always thought was a bit, you know, a bit special. She's a wonder as well. <laughs> no special ones, all special ones. That's worth talking about. Some of what I talk about isn't worth talking about. That is worth talking about. <laughs> you know, this, this really isn't about getting to grips with reality, getting to grips with the truth. This isn't, that's not, that's not real. That's not what wants to be spoken. Although that is sometimes spoken about. What wants to be spoken about is that the complete equality, the complete neutrality. And in that neutrality are all the shades. So in the utter emptiness of nothing, all the beautiful colors and tastes 
and smells and movement and everything is here. Nowhere else. There's no there's no nothing to wait for. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Why not? I know you're what you're waiting for, something a bit better. <laughs> something a bit more special. Dario has his hand up. Hi, Dario. <laughs> Me again. Uh, there's this one story about this Zen teacher who uh, in, a, in a village and one day a king arrived and he, he got excited that the king arrived and then, then he no. stopped teaching <laughs> and he went away to yeah, seek further because he realized he wasn't finished. Oh, that's not the story that I thought you were going to tell. Oh, which which one was it? I can't remember, but that's not. It was a much longer story. <laughs> so the king arrived, and he thought the king was more special. So he he, he got excited that the king arrived. Oh yeah. So then he realized, okay, I'm gonna, I'm seeing a king. I'm not seeing life. So. Oh. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well. I'm not much of a royalist myself. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I I used to be such a such a a vehement socialist, you would say, and now I can't be no interest at all. One, I mean that you could say that's a great relief as well to have no interest in politics. I mean that that's not necessarily the case, but the the politics was about me making, you know, I knew what was right for other people, you know, and socialism is the is the great advocate of that, you know. We know we know together how we'll make everyone's lives better. So freedom from that is very freeing not trying to make, you know, thinking that I know best for others. Thinking I know if I, if I, if only we did this, then it would be better for everyone. As if I would know that, as if anyone knows that. The arrogance of self, especially when selves get together, you know, as a unified, well, it's never unified, they're constantly bickering with each other, but, you know, in a political party or in a political movement, I mean, there's nothing more um, nothing more boring than that, is that? How boring is that? David has his hand up. David. Have we not run out of time? Yeah, we're out of time, Dave. You're gonna you're gonna round up for us now. Uh, it's just it's just because you were saying about the, the uh, prince. It's quite poignant because it's about Prince Philip. Oh yeah. Quickly, quickly. He was he was obsessed with the lunar mat, lunar landing with the three astronauts. He got obsessed with them. They're like supermen. When he met them, they were three kids with colds, and he he just it he, it was a realization that. That you make your heroes and they're just ordinary as you are or just ordinary people it's quite yeah. poignant yeah Good. yeah 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 well they do say don't they say everyone you know it's a cliche but you should never meet your heroes exactly right because yeah. you know they're likely to tumble straight from their pedestal on within the first a, minute of meeting them yeah you haven't managed to oh. do it yet too. god he's not as tall as he looks on tv and in, in the movies and he's nowhere near as handsome. And actually, actually, I, he had a bit of bad breath. You know, he was just ordinary. <laughs>
it's just a human being. And um, yeah, this is this is like the the end of the possibility of ever putting a human on a you know a, anyone being on a pedestal again. You just can't. It's just not possible. So that's nice. <laughs> well, thanks very much for coming, everyone. Um, nice to see you all. If you're if you're at a loose end on Wednesday, you can see Tim Cliss big in Bulgaria. As I mentioned last week, he <laughs> so Luciana is hosting me in Sofia. Shame I'm not. I can't fly there, but virtually and then it's translated into Bulgarian and if you haven't been before you might like it because there's so much space because it's translated so it's it's a very different experience for me because there's I have to pause mid-sentence and um some people and I don't can't remember what I've just you know I can't remember what the start of the sentence was so that makes it interesting um but some people like that. Anyway, that's on Wednesday at seven and normal meeting on Thursday at seven. Um, you're welcome to those. Um, if, you've, if you've not been on the mailing list or you're not, um, Julie has very kindly done a newsletter for me and it's really good. So if you'd like the newsletter, you can get that. If you just go to the website, Tim Pliss, there's a new, um, subscribe to the newsletter, then you'll get um, updates of anything that's going on. And I am hoping there is a, a possibility of hopefully doing a, a weekend in London, you know, coming out of lockdown permitting. So I'll let you, I'll let you know more about that when we have uh, any, something a bit more concrete. If you'd like to make a donation, then by all means do. Um, they're always gratefully received. Lovely to see you all. And just, Darren, really, Darren, and, just really, and just really quickly in chat, Scott asks, is there is there a nothing cafe on Thursday after Tim's meeting? Yes, there is. Yeah. And Anna Britt asks, how do we find your Wednesday meeting? That's on your website, right? She can go to the website, I think it's It's it? not at the okay. moment, and I'll put it on tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. So th thanks, everybody. Lovely thanks. to see you all. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Thanks, Tim. Bye. 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 If you haven't seen it yet, you must see it. Just Google it now. When you come off this, just Google Laurel and Hardy Bice. you got to see it. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, everyone. <laughs>